probably the most important thing I did. I was involved as a young scientist in the committee that actually reviewed the data and recommended that there be no smoking on airplanes. You may be shocked to hear that it was even a question for science at the time, but it was. And when I look at what we know now about mobile phone radiation, I see some very interesting similarities. A growing number of prominent doctors and scientists are raising warning flags over radiation this morning, and your kids could be facing a greater risk of exposure. I think the most important study is a study by the National Toxicology Program in a classic large carcinogenicity test, one of the largest ever performed, and for that matter, one of the most expensive, they found increased risk of the tumours, which we believe radiofrequency radiation is causing in man. Uh, particular tumours called schwannomas, in the rats they were in the heart, in, in humans they're often in the nerve the ear nerve, the vestibular nerve. Cell phone providers say they follow all safety guidelines put into place by the FCC. The current FCC safety standard was developed nearly 20 years ago. The, the manufacturers actually tell people in the instruction manual, which I never read, to put not to put the cell phone against your ear. It does say exactly that. There's a, the BlackBerry, for example, warns to keep your phone at least 0.98 inches away from the body when transmitting. With, uh, with an iPhone, for example, it's 5 eighths of an inch. At this point, the evidence has become sufficiently strong that cell phone radiation is a human carcinogen. A major development from California's Department of Public Health, high use of cell phones may be linked to certain types of cancer and other health effects, including brain cancer and tumors, lower sperm counts, headaches, and effects on learning, memory, hearing, behavior, and sleep. If it was a real problem, I would know. If it was a real problem, the government would protect us. How come I'm not hearing about this? They're all things I've heard when I give seminars. You know, I get up there and they say, oh yeah, if this was really a problem, they would have told us. I am they. I am a, you know, legitimate scientist and I am telling you. Did you know? That cell phone, the one in your pocket, emits radio frequency radiation. As long as your phone's turned on, even if you're not talking or texting. The American Academy of Pediatrics in over a dozen countries recommends reducing children's exposure to wireless radiation. When using a cell phone, I always keep it away from my body. I use speakerphone or a headset like this. To stop microwave exposure, I put my phone on airplane mode and turn off Wi-Fi and Bluetooth function. I hold the phone at a distance and make sure it's not touching my body. Cell phones are not toys. Children's brains and bodies are still developing and are vulnerable to wireless radiation. Practice safe and responsible habits with yourself and your children. When using the computer, I always try to make sure my connection is corded, not wireless. Remember not to use your cell phone in the car. The phone works at higher power in metal surroundings and bounces around, increasing your family's radiation exposure. For their safety. For your safety. Because children are more vulnerable. Remind them. Remind yourself. To limit your microwave radiation exposures. Don't believe the hype about 5G. You don't need it, and you have the right to say that. 5G is not just one kind of radiation. It's going to include 3G and 4G in it as well, and it's going to bring massive amounts of radiation right next to your bedroom window. Do you really need the capacity for your phone to talk to your dishwasher or your dryer or your coffee pot? I don't want that, and I don't want to see the consequences of what will happen to us and to the wildlife around us if we have exposure to this kind of radiation that we cannot escape. It will be everywhere. That's the only way it will work. There's no way out once we launch 5G in major cities. You will not have a place to go where you will not be exposed. It's not been tested adequately, and the tests that we do have show that it can damage our health. It can accelerate the growth of bacteria. It can accelerate the growth, growth of, of viruses, and it can damage the eye. That's not an acceptable risk as far as I'm concerned. And I'm not alone in that view. There are 
uh, hundreds of scientists who agree with me who've petitioned the UN for a moratorium on the development of 5G until we have safety guidelines in place, which we do not at this time because the FCC has said they don't need to revise their 23-year-old safety guidelines. We at Environmental Health Trust are challenging that.